This video is an updated tutorial on how to create the queen chess piece, which serves as our quiz number two, the revolved quiz. As the name says, this is an object created with a revolve tool on Autodesk Inventor. Essentially, we take half of the shape, sketch it out, revolve it, and then for the second step, we create the sketch for the crown and then do an extrude cut down to cut the crown out. Now, when we start this, first thing I want to point out is that all measurements here are in millimeters. So please set your units to millimeters is the first thing you do. To do that, we go to tools, document settings, and go to units where we can change to whatever we don't like. Anytime you're using millimeters in this class, you should be using two decimal places. That's also a hint that the units have changed from inches. Now I'm going to start sketching this bottom portion here. There's quite a few dimensions in here I need to be aware of. So the best thing to do is just take this piece by piece, line by arc, and get that done. If we look here, there's a line another line there's an arc here there is actually a very short straight line here that we need to be aware of and then there are three arcs one two and three this very large arc here uh, that's a radius of 45 um, will take kind of the rest of this uh, so i'm going to focus on this bottom part right now so let me start my sketch and this origin is essentially the center line of this queen. It's essentially this point right here. And I'm going to be drawing, um, like I said, half of this. All right. So I'm going to stop there for now and get all my dimensions in this part. I'm just going to take the dimensions that we see right here. I'm going to start with 12.7. I'm going to do this 2.75. Then this arc of 1.25. And lastly, for this little section here, is this half a millimeter line. It's really important to just take these one by one and not be overwhelmed by any single part of it. Because it's all just lines and arcs. One by one. Now, one thing I do want to point out is these relationships need to be tangent. Tangent is something we're going to use a lot of. Um, if you draw it pretty accurately, they actually are put in there automatically, as you can see here. So I don't have to go back and put them, but it just depends how you draw, how you sketch, I should say. All right, so here's this first part. It's all fully constrained. Uh, it's just good habit to fully constrain what you can and then move on from there. There are times where maybe you don't have all the information, but when you do, put all the information in. Now the next set of arcs is this three right here. I have one, two, three arcs. Make sure you pay attention to which way they are oriented. That's kind of an outside arc. This is an inside arc. And then this third one's kind of a small inside arc. First thing I'm going to do is tangent these so they're all very smooth. Anytime you see arcs that are very smooth, you can be sure that they probably have a tangent relationship with each other. One thing that's important here is to do a vertical relationship with these two endpoints of this first arc. Now I can put in my diameter or my radius, which here is three millimeters. This bigger guy here is six millimeters, and this guy is 1.5. Okay. I do have some dimensions here as well. I have some linear dimensions, so I'm going to put those in. So this 4.47 refers to the distance between these points. The next one is the distance between the two following points, or the following arc. That is 4.37. And 
Now, it looks like it's all fully constrained, but the one dimension I need is actually this endpoint. And I got to make sure that endpoint is on the left side because there's actually a dimension from the endpoint to the center point. And if that's on the wrong side, you're going to have some issues later. You're going to be way off on your volume measurement. Now, if I look down here, I am fully constrained, so that, this is a really good start to this. Uh, now, what I want to be aware of is this big, giant arc here. Put this guy in now. It's time for that. So this is a 45 millimeter arc, and beware of the center point. The center point is 32 millimeters from the origin or from the bottom of the queen, however you prefer to look at it. Forty-five, and I'm just going to use this line. This is 32. And I'll take my coincident tool and let it know where it needs to terminate here. Okay. Now that's black, but this endpoint can change, right? Because I haven't locked that in yet. And I'm not going to right now. I'm going to leave that. And then I'm going to focus on these uh, ribs or ridges, whatever you want to call them here, uh, on the queen. So what I see here is I see about a quarter arc. Uh, there's about a half arc here and then almost another quarter arc with a, a small half arc above that. So I'm going to kind of draw these now. Now I do have a dimension to the starting point. But I can put that in any time really. So let's see, a quarter arc is going to look something like that. Then I have kind of this half arc. And then I have like another part arc. And I'm not going to worry about getting them perfect while I'm sketching. Just generally correct. Because the dimensions will make them look right down the road. The height from that starting, from the bottom to that starting point is 33. Now let's see what I can do. Well... Uh, since this isn't a perfectly vertical line, I'm not necessarily going to have perfectly quarter arcs. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these center points on the line. Because it really feels like that's what's supposed to happen. Okay. Now this one's a little tight, but I think it'll work itself out. I'm going to put a vertical here because this really does look like it is, um, that is what's supposed to happen. Okay. Put some dimensions in here now. So what do I know? I know this is 1.5 millimeters. I know this is 0.75 millimeters. I don't have one for this, but probably won't need one. Okay. I'm going to do a horizontal and see if that brings this down and gives me that quarter arc feel. And that looks much better. Now the center point here, since I have a half arc, should be on this vertical line, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay, that actually looks pretty good as of right now. Uh, my guess is, is I'm missing one thing that I kind of need here. Now I don't have this dimension, so it's not a good habit to go putting stuff in you don't know. I'm going to start pulling and prodding and see what moves. Okay, I can see the biggest uh, thing moving here is the relationship between these two. And since it's almost a quarter, I'm going to make those horizontal. And that was what I needed. All right, now if I look back over here, there's a 2.5 millimeter dimension. And that is from the center point of this next half arc to, to this line right here. So, a couple of ways I can attack this. I'm going to do a half arc just arbitrarily up here. And then I'm going to use the dimension from that center point to this point. And it doesn't matter which of these two points I select because they are horizontal. And that is 2.5 millimeters. So now I lost my arc. Okay, let's go back. So before I change that to 2.5, I'm going to do something with these, with this arc here. And I do happen to know that that has a dimension, so that makes it easy. That's 0.5. Now I'm going to change this to 2.5. Okay, and the last thing is just like these other partial arcs, I'm going to put the center point on my line here. And that fixed that up perfectly. 
All right, now before you leave this area, what I want you to do is split this large arc into sections, and I want you to make the part that goes between here construction line so that you don't have to go select all these when you want to revolve it. So we're going to use the split tool. Now you see the little red X where it's going to split it up, and that is exactly what I want. Now I'm going to select these and make them construction. So that way when I revolve, I get these, you know, detail pieces without having to go select them. But the fact that it's construction keeps all my geometry together. Now, if we look at the top part here, I have a almost half arc, not quite. I have a larger arc and it comes into this arc here. So I have essentially three arcs here. I'm going to start here and work my way back. So there's one arc kind of going this way, one going this way, and then one to basically the center line. And now's a good time too to put my center line in. And since I'm doing the center line, I can put this dimension in. 58 millimeters. That's how tall this thing is. All right, now that went a little goofy, but that's an easy fix. Just bring this arc back down. Okay, now what do I know here? I know that this top piece, this little ball on the top, is not exactly a ball. If it were, it wouldn't print out very well. It's, there's actually a one millimeter gap between the end point and essentially the center point. And speaking of center point, let's put the center point on that line as well. And I actually have a dimension for that that I'm going to put in now. And that's 1.5 millimeters. I have the dimension for this, which is 6 millimeters. And this is supposed to be 7 millimeters. That's actually missing from this, but I will fix it. And it will be on the one that you look at in this class. So I know it's 7. I'm just going to go ahead and put it there. Now I'm very close, but I'm missing a couple of things. If I look right now, um, there's still quite a bit of movement in these arcs. This arc should be like a perfect quarter arc. And as we know by now, if I take the center point and I make it horizontal with the end point, with one end point and vertical with the other, it gives me a perfect quarter arc. Now let's see what's going on here. So I have to decide here, how tall should this thing be? Well, barring any um, hard information, which I actually may put something in here so you guys don't have to guess. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can figure out a good way to do this. Actually, I'll put a dimension in here for you guys. That's only fair. Some things we shouldn't be guessing at. We're going to make this 52 millimeters. So with those dimensions, that is everything that you need to do to create this queen. There are one or two dimensions missing from this, but they will be there before you guys start working on it. Um, but that's it. Now we go to revolve. Hopefully it picks up our profile. And because we did a construction line here and here, it automatically... Uh, integrates that as part of the design. For our axis, we are selecting our center axis. And there is the preview of it, which mine has been white lately and I haven't changed it. Yours will probably look gray if you're using default settings. Let's see if I can quickly change this to a different... That looks a little better. This is probably more like what you see. All right, so your queen should look pretty similar to this, if not exactly the same. There are two more steps we're going to do here. We're going to scallop cut the crown as it shows over here in the drawing. And you are going to put your initials on the bottom so that when it prints out on the 3D printer, you will know whose is whose. 
But that is how we do the queen. The next video will show you the, the uh, top part. And I'll probably just throw the bottom in there too. But at this point, you should know how to do that as well.